Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Sal here at the Little Royals Dentistry for Kids in Jupiter, Florida. It is February, which is Children's Dental Health Month. So normally during this month, we love to take a lot of time to get out into the community and visit a lot of our local schools and preschools to kind of meet face to face with our young students and our te the teachers out there to kind of go over a lot of really important topics. Uh, but with COVID-19 and it being at the tail of the pandemic, we are going to be doing it a little bit differently. We still want to give you that great content, but we thought that it would be really beneficial if we could put it together in a series of short videos. So what we're going to basically go through are a couple different topics uh, that we're going to have to follow through with. So the first one we'll go through is probably going to be a tour of a dental office, especially a dental office made for kids. And we'll talk about what it means to be a dentist, what a dentist is, what a dentist does. We'll talk about what would happen during a routine kind of dental visit, if we were like, you know, doing a cleaning or taking pictures. We'll also go over some fundamentals of brushing and flossing tips. And we'll also go through some exercises for dental nutrition. So we are really excited to go through these and we hope you'll enjoy them all. Uh, if you need our further support, we want you to know, of course, that we're here for our community and if there's anything that we can do to provide you um, additional supplies that you would like, please reach out to us. Don't hesitate to ask and we will be uh, do our best to accommodate as we can. And you can always email us or reach out to us. Our number is 561-510-1450. So we look forward to uh, presenting these videos. We hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy making them. Take care. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sal here in beautiful Abacoa, Jupiter, Florida. And I'm actually outside right now of our beautiful professional center. We're inside, we have our pediatric dental office, the Little Royals Fancy for Kids. And you know, part of Dental Health Month, I want to show you guys around what it's like to be in an actual kids dental office. So come on inside and we'll take a tour. All right, you guys, let's come on inside. So when we have you come into our pediatric dental office, we want you to feel super comfortable and super welcome. You're gonna always get a really warm hello and a greeting from whoever's at our front desk. Oh, hey, hi Kim, how's it going? And you're gonna find out we're in a nice fun lobby full of big plush chairs. And we have lots of fun iPad game stations out there. We're always playing some fun Disney movies or anything like that. So we want you to be really comfortable and really at home. Actually, it looks like we have a patient already waiting over here. Do you think, Mr. Leo, are you ready for your appointment? Let's go check and find out. All right, Leo, I think we're actually ready for you. So I hope you really enjoyed our waiting room. You know, all this is means so much to us because, you know, Dr. Yossi and I, you know, we really love the book, The Little Prince. And we really tried to make the Sahara Desert here where the Little Prince is first meets our, our pilot and gets to hear the story about this incredible traveler. So let me go show you about some of our fun things in our office about how we go from his interplanetary travels. So we really think that you're going to be a really cool helper. And we have a lot of good friends here that, we, that actually help us out here in our Royal Smiles Club. These are our kids who are getting there and they're making sure that we are, we're sugar bug free. And I love that. And sometimes, you know, we have to, the tooth fairy comes early. So we're rewarding the tooth fairy to say, hey, we're bringing her up and we're calling her in. And, you know, my favorite part about the visit, if we do a really good job at the end, is we have some really awesome prizes. And it's always fun to know what the surprise is going to be. Now, when we're doing our cleanings and our checkups and the like, you know, we're going we're gonna to go out of the little prince's world here. So we're actually going to be landing onto Earth. So that's where we are right now. And we're going among the field of roses and going to the hills where the, the, the dogs and the wolves are flying free. But here we have here our open bay. So overhead, we're watching fun TV and we're going to be getting laid back and we're going to be having lots of fun flavors that we can choose from to brush our teeth with. Uh, it's going to be really easy, really simple, and really fun. Now, I mean, that's if, but sometimes, you know, we're going to take some pictures of your teeth, okay? So when we're taking pictures, we're going to come to our picture room, okay? So I'm going to come right this way, over here, and you can see the little prince flying away, flying away. If we take a quick little peek over there, that's where we keep everything super clean for you guys. But then over here, we have a special room over here where we take pictures. And we take really, and these are little camera over here, and we take really cool pictures of your teeth. And sometimes, sometimes if we have to take really extra special care of your teeth, we will bring you into one of our little quiet rooms over here, and we'll check out how things are going. And you can always hang out and have fun. But yeah, that's basically what it looks like to be in the dental office. We're going to be here, we're going to clean your teeth, we're going to make it really enjoyable, 
and really simple and straightforward. So we look forward to getting your visit started. Let's go. So I get asked a lot, what did you do to become a dentist? And exactly what does it mean when you're a dentist? Well, dental school and being a dentist, it's a lot of things. Number one, to become a dentist, it takes a bit of time. You have to complete your normal all the way through high school. And then generally it's recommended to get at least a bachelor's degree. And then dental school itself is four years. And if you were to go out and specialize in different fields of dentistry, like I did to specialize to work just with kids and become a pediatric dentist, that's an additional two years at least of training. Uh, so it is definitely a lot of time and effort, but it's worth it. Um, as a dentist, I have a fabulous job in that I get to work in making people smile. I mean, and making sure that we have happy smiles and that and from the, as a pediatric dentist, I get to watch these smiles start from when they're very, very young to grow up until they become adults. And that's also really gratifying and amazing. But our role as dentists is to make sure that we're looking at for the signs of that our teeth are developing in a healthy pattern, uh, healthy formation, and they're not becoming subject to disease or decay, be it if it's a the cavity process in the tooth itself, or if it is an inflammatory process or an infection process in the gums or associated tissues. So we really specialize in looking all around from the neck up and getting to know that. And, and that's how we kind of earn our doctor title because we do feel very strongly that, you know, your teeth are connected to the whole body. Um, so the difference between once going on to become a pediatric dentist and from just working as a general dentist, is that we kind of specialize and focus more on everything about kids from very, very young age, um, and basically from, from, from tape, baby, babies that are born with teeth, uh, all the way until they're ready to graduate 18, 19, 20, until we can get them off to see regular routine adult care. So we do focus on a lot of dentistry, um, but we really work on making sure that we can help to make younger kids have comfortable, experiences that will get them ready for routine good oral health practices throughout their life and that's why i find it to be a very rewarding profession and uh, i'm so glad to be a big part of it all right welcome to one of our private rooms here in our dental office so we use these spaces to kind of give you a little bit more of a quiet fun atmosphere so we can kind of focus on getting your teeth nice and clean we normally have the tv going up above overhead so you can pick out some entertainment and it makes a lot of fun. You know, I think I hear Leo coming in and maybe Miss Kim's gonna have him come in here to get him situated. Yeah, now if you see right now, uh, Miss Kim's gonna have Leo get really nice and comfortable here in our, in our, in our big dental chair. Um, Miss Kim's gonna be placing a special napkin around Leo because we don't wanna get anything on him, his clothing, his shirt, or in his case, his big fluffy mane. Um, and now if you can tell, Miss Kim's already dressed in some special outfits that she wears as a dental assistant. Um, so as a dentist, I'm not going to really be right here just like this anymore. I mean, yes, I'll be wearing some scrubs or an outfit like this possibly, but I am going to be wearing some additional layers of protection. Uh, and that's just make things a little bit more safe for you and safe for me. So one of the things I might wear, since I have longer hair, is I would be possibly wearing a, a hair cap of some sort. I have a fun one over here. Uh, additionally, and another thing that I'm going to be wearing is going to be something to cover my mouth so I'm not spitting onto you. Uh, or sure sure any of, my, any of my, my breast smells or otherwise, that's going to go over my nose and my nose. And I'm also going to be wearing a special kind of gown that's going to kind of protect and cover my arms. And last but not least, because we, don't, we do sometimes use a lot of water, we are going to be probably doing things that are going to be splashing around. So I'm going to wear a special shield over and protect my face and eyes so I don't splash things. And then of course, when I come in here to actually get to work on Leo's teeth, I'm going to be uh, washing my hands really well before that, or using a sanitizer, just depending where we are, and then I'm going to be placing some special gloves on because I don't think you want me sticking my fingers in there right away. So I'm going to go get dressed, and we're we'll going to get Leo laid back, and we'll be right back. So we're back with fresh washed, fresh clean hands, and we're all dressed up and ready to go. We're not gonna be using real water for Mr. Leo for today's demonstration, so I'm gonna take this off so you can hear me just a little bit better, okay? So once we have clean hands on, 
we're going to always go ahead and get our gloves on. And as we're going to get Leo ready, we have a special light that we use overhead. So we're going to put a little pair of sunglasses on so he doesn't have to actually get the light in his eyes. Okay. And you can see he's really comfortable here. And basically, we can look around. I can get good access. And we can kind of do a little massage of his cheeks and see what a beautiful smile that he has. So the first thing that we detect like to use is a little dental mirror. So as you can see, it's really small, and I can use it to look around it all over the place and all around the mouth, so I can get around to that point. Now, Mr. Leo here has lots and lots of teeth, so I have to do a lot of counting. So I have a special instrument, I have a little tooth counter, and this is something that's not necessarily that that's anything that is uncomfortable or otherwise, it may look a little bit weird, but we use this to just go around and we will feel on the teeth, and we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and so on. It's an awful lot of teeth that he's got in there. But as you can see, it's really easy and really simple to look around, okay? Now, there are some other fun things that we like to use when we're gonna be brushing the teeth. And the first thing with, with that that we use is this actual spinning toothbrush. My spinning toothbrush has, has got a magical power cord over here. And what I can do is I can press a special button and it makes a funny noise and it will go around and it will go all over the place, okay? And we can kind of go and clean, tickle, 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 and brush the teeth. We use lots of fun flavors. So make sure you ask us about what we have, like things like marshmallow, chocolate, bubble gum, strawberry, lots of fun flavors. When we, afterwards, when we want to make sure that we want to get rid of all the, any leftover toothpaste in there, we would use this little spray gun I actually when I press it, one of these two buttons, I can either squirt a little wind to dry it off, or I can squirt a little bit of water to go ahead and rinse away anything like that. If you think there's too much to drink, don't worry. We have another friend here we call Mr. Thirsty. It comes with lots of different colors, and he's a little bendy straw that you can see over here Miss Kim has. He bends around, and when we turn him on, he goes in, and he would drink lots and lots of water. So these are the main instruments that we use to help clean your teeth at the dental office. So sometimes when we're doing our dental cleanings and checkups, we have to get a closer look in between your teeth and through your teeth. So we take some really cool dental pictures called x-rays. Um, so right over here, we have Leo in our special x-ray room, and he's here to, uh, dressed up in a really special picture of us, kind of like a warm blanket. And Miss Kim's gonna take a little tiny picture frame that she's gonna hold right by the teeth. And then she has her really cool camera that she's gonna position right next to Leo. And she's gonna press a fun button, and we get a cool picture that shows up just like this. And oh my gosh, no sugar bugs. Awesome job. Hey everybody. So a big part about how we talk about our overall dental health is related to dental nutrition. So and nutrition is important for everything related to our overall health and general health too. So part of when we were talking to you guys about trying to make sure that you're taking care of your teeth, we like to talk about what is good for your teeth, what's bad for your teeth, and we might want to kind of go through some of the facts and fiction of what can be confusing about certain foods out there because there's an awful lot of things that you can go out there into your local supermarkets and when it comes to choosing between what's a good snack food versus uh, versus what's something that's good to drink it can be a little bit tricky at times the the main pillars that we're going to be talking about what are things that we don't like for our teeth are things that are about three main things number one we don't want the food to be overly acidic or to be lingering with an acidity to it because we have to want to keep our mouths in a very neutral kind of way we do expect that when we eat foods there is going to be a change and that's normal but if we're going to be doing that frequently throughout the day for snacking we want to look for foods that are less acidic uh, number two we're looking at the amount of content of sugar uh, we don't want things to be super high in sugar because sugar is a readily accessible and used source by the bacteria in our mouth uh, that can certainly make them thrive. And when the bacteria, and especially the bad ones that can be there, are thriving, they're out there and they're making little tiny holes and things that we call cavities. So we don't want the bacteria or the sugar bugs to get the upper end of us. And the third thing that we worry about is basically kind of the duration, how long this kind of food interacts with and sticks to your teeth. So if it's something that's gonna be there that will be lingering for a long period of time, 
that becomes a problem too because the amount and how long it's staying there is a problem. It's something that will be more caused for the bacteria or the sugar bugs to take advantage of. So uh, I, I basically what I want us to do is I have a couple of examples of some foods and drinks out here and we're going to play around with these a little bit and we'll have you guys play along with me as well while you're watching and we're going to try and decide why we think some things are good for us or would make our teeth happy <laughs> or why some things are not as good for us and may make our teeth a little bit more on the sad side of things. All right, so let's go ahead and just start off with something that I'm seeing right here in the middle. I'm seeing a lovely stack of awesome chips over here. Or maybe it's like Pringles, right? Maybe you might see that. What would you guys think this would be? Would this be a food that makes my teeth happy or a food that makes my teeth sad? So if you were writing on the word sad, you'd be correct. And the main reason why we think about this is we're going back to the tenet of that chips and kind of crackers like this, and that can also include things like goldfish crackers, or maybe even sometimes animal crackers. Um, these are things that are basically break down into simple carbohydrates, which break down into sugars, and those are things that will get stuck into our teeth. How many times do you feel like you're, you're chewing on chips afterwards, and do you find that you may be going in there with your fingers and you might be picking out at them and looking, oh, what's all this stuff over here? Are your tongues working at it? That's because the grooves of our teeth are very, very deep, and if stuff is getting stuck in there, that means they're sticking around for a long time, and they definitely convert into that simple basic sugar, and those sugar bugs are gonna to wanna to eat that, and that's what can cause a cavity. So we don't like to have these too often, all right? Uh, what do you guys think about, you know, the idea of having some grapes? So with grapes, one considers to be something that we call a happy food. Uh, and and this, I will put this in the same category if we look at you know, some of our other fruits like strawberries uh, and even apples, or maybe even a little slice of watermelon here. These kind of things, um, basically, uh, that while they do have a little bit of an acidic nature to them, which we don't like so much, but they are things that you can eat really quickly and they melt away and they are swelled and they're lingering and they're pretty much healthy. So if you're looking at all the vitamins and nutrients that you're gonna get out of these kind of things, you're gonna get the most out of the fresh fruit itself. All right, what do we think about ice cream? Well, this is a pretty cool ice cream cone, isn't it? Almost looks good enough to eat. Uh, this looks maybe a strawberry flavor. If you guys were thinking about ice cream that most of the time it might make your teeth sad, then I think you'd be correct. This will probably make your teeth a little bit sad at times if you eat a lot of it. Um, the reason why, again, this is a really concentrated, really high in sugar food. And it kind of, the way it kind of it lingers in there, it's gonna be something that's not so great for your teeth. A lot of other things I might think about would be that I've worried about a little bit in this category of these desserts would be things of nature like donuts and cupcakes. Again, really, really high in refined sugar and really easy for bacteria to use to cause cavities. But what do you guys think about something like chocolate? So this is a, a tough one at times. If you're eating this like nonstop, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but for a quick snack, a plain chocolate bar like this, and I'm talking about maybe your Hershey's chocolate bars or ones that are really simple and melt away, can actually be a happy food or an okay food for your teeth. Uh, dark chocolates are really great in antioxidants and things like that. Um, the reason why we are we like these better than say uh, it's something like that may get like, like a, a hard caramel sticky center to it is that this will actually melt away on your teeth and it won't linger for a long time. So it's a nice way to get a simple flavor of sweet that we can all enjoy while we having to be here for long lasting effects. Okay. So what do we think about broccoli? So broccoli is also, I mean, you're generally most of your vegetables, what I would consider to be a really happy food. Um, it's really rich in lots of good vitamins and nutrients and it's helps make you big and strong. Um, generally, you can eat these in most of their formats. If you eat them raw or if you have them cooked, they're going to be pretty simple foods that you can go ahead and uh, will pass through uh, without much issue. So you can always look to any of your, your typical veggies, or carrots, or your asparagus, or your green beans. Can all be some really good options there. OK. 
Okay. Let's talk a little bit and switch the gear a little bit, talking about some things that we like to drink. Because I know drinking is another thing that we, 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 have to, we have to hydrate. So let's think about this as in chocolate milk. So chocolate milk, to me, comes into under the sad food category. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, if you take milk, milk has a lot of wonderful properties, you know, we from a lot of these different sources, if it's, if it's comes from the cow or other animals that we have out there, or even some of these nut milks and uh, other vegan based options, they have a lot of really good properties in them, but they all do have a little bit of natural sugar. So the difference is that if you're taking just the basics of a regular milk, uh, and you add into a flavor, like a chocolate milk, you're taking what was any good to it and just adding boatloads of sugar on top of it and it's not something that we like to have coat or put onto our teeth so this to me is something that if you had an option to choose a milk i would choose one that was unflavored and came as straight from the natural source as it could have been okay and what about our friends water so water is something that i would consider to be our happy food or our happy drink in this case Water is probably your go-to thing uh, that you can find if you're running around, coming around from playing somewhere, uh, and you went outside in the playground, or if you are uh, just basically looking for something to kind of quench your thirst, is the best thing, for, best bet for you if you want to be the least uh, changed to your mouth. It's very neutral, it won't change the acidity in your mouth, and it's not going to be and it's something that's really easy for you to go ahead and, and drink. So I always recommend to all of our parents and to all of you guys out there, all of our teachers who are offering our kids out there, any kind of this plain unflavored water is the best thing if you're thirsty to rehydrate, which is the best thing you wanna do over there. But what about things that, like, that come in these like green containers or the red containers or the cans or the bottles or the sodas? So sodas are what we consider to be on the sad spectrum of the foods. And I know these can taste really yummy at times, but they actually really hit on all three of the things that we don't love so much about. They are very acidic in their nature. They are um, really high in their sugar content, and they kind of will go in there and change all of the pH of the mouth, and they will linger for a long period of time. Because that means your mouth is trying to make more saliva to go ahead and uh, counteract that. And because there's so much sugar in there, it actually makes you more thirsty, and you want to drink more of this stuff. So it doesn't actually quench your thirst, it makes you more thirsty. So we don't like that as a great beverage to kind of make you feel better. Um, and you know what, there's another thing that we call out there, it's called diet soda, of any type. It's not really any better. Yes, the sugar content's a little bit less, or they use some alternative sugars, but it's still super acidy, super acidic, and it's not something that we want you guys to be in, in having at all if possible. So <laughs> what about over here, we got two little guys here. Uh, some Capri Sun. So generally to me, most juices, I would say, fall into the category of sad foods. And again, this is because to me, I say, if I could have an awesome apple, and I could, why would I have the apple instead of drinking the apple juice? Because the apple is healthier, it has all the, the vitamins and nutrients there, without the added sugar to it. And if I could have a, um, same thing goes for anything else that you would drink, pineapple juice, things like that. The regular, the regular fruit's a lot better. Now, there are some of these things that I know we like that sweet flavor and that sweet taste. There are some brands out here, and even within Capri Sun, when they actually make products that are their normal juices here versus ones that they call their, their flavored waters. Um, these are a little bit better on the better side of things. If you're looking for a compromise at times, that you can kind of try and look out to engage in because um, these are these are uh, flavored have natural flavoring into them but they're primarily water so these are a little bit on the better side of things uh, sometimes you can do crystal light flavoring as well uh, as another alternative that can be if you have someone who really just can't get you really have that sweet tooth and you can't bite it back so let's look around over here what else have we, i think are really interesting things to look at well let's look at this one over here this is a kind of an interesting one what do you guys think about cheese? So to me, I always put cheese into our happy food. I hope that for all you cheese lovers out there, it makes you really happy as well. Um, cheese has really got a lot of great proteins in it and it's actually really got a lot of good nutrients too. 
and it, it comes in a lot of different shapes and forms. This is like a Swiss cheese block, but it, generally it's something that will melt away and it will not linger around and stick in your teeth. This is actually a great snack food that we tend to recommend to say, hey, if you're packing lunches out there, mom and dad for your kids, you know, cheese sticks, little baby cheeses are all really awesome things to add in there because they are a great protein source and they are a pretty healthy snack as well. They don't linger, they don't stick to the teeth as well. Um, so let's go ahead and separate other things. What about these guys over here? What do you think about these kind of things? So Skittles or Starburst or all these kind of sticky candies, they kind of fall into the fact that they're really high in sugar and they stick around and they linger. So if we're thinking about how can we reward ourselves for having like a, doing a really great job and you know, I have a little craving for something a little bit sweet, I'd say, let's take the away because these end up being stuck to your teeth for a long time and say, no, thank you. And let's try and find something that's more simple, like a plain bar of chocolate, okay? Now, what do you guys think about, this is as an example of our type of a cereal over here. So this one looks probably kind of like a, a Lucky Charm box. What do you guys think about Lucky Charms? So to me, I think Lucky Charms is a kind of cereal that I will put into the sad food. And let's think about that. Why do we think Lucky Charms go into the sad food category? Well, what's in them? Lots of sticky marshmallows and a lot of really sweetened kind of crisp items. So it's not our best one to go towards. What about Fruit Loops? If there was real fruit in them, maybe. What are some cereals that you think we might like that are probably better for us? Well, we could think about Cheerios and even sometimes those flavored Cheerios that they have out there are probably a little bit better uh, compared to some of the other ones that we talked about like Cinnamon Toast Crunch we don't like so much or Captain Crunch which are getting really heavily frosted and, and sticky. Um, another great one could be think about um, you know Special K with some more fun strawberries in there. Uh, another great option to go towards. And remember, what kind of milk are we gonna use? We're using milk, regular milk, that's right. Anything that's not flavored, okay? Uh, so that's kind of a big thing about looking at some of our lots of foods here. We have a lot of other things we could talk about. I mean, what about this pizza? What do you guys think? I think probably we're going into the idea of well, I'm overall pretty happy, but again, there's some things on there that could be bad, so just watch what your toppings are. Uh, cheese, again, we love, we like tomatoes, uh, we like lots of our vegetables, and, we, and even some of our main proteins are okay. So most of the time that's pretty good for them to have. Um, so, it, but there's a whole lot of things out there. So I want you to always think about it. If we're gonna be talking about what kind of foods are we gonna be enjoying, let's uh, remember this. We do wanna have at least three square meals a day. So if we can have a great breakfast, and we can have a great lunch, and a great dinner, these are the times that we want to be able to get in a mixture of all the typical varieties of foods. Um, and sometimes if we had to have a not so great food there at that time, we can pair it there and, and kind of mask it in there. But when we're looking for our in-between snacks or in-between drinks because we're thirsty, we want to look to make sure that we're avoiding those three things that we talked about. We want to make sure we're not super high in sugar. We're not eating something that's going to be super sticky or sticking around in our teeth for a long period of time and we're looking for something that's not gonna bring a, a gigantic change or a big in onrush of acidity into our mouth uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna last for a long time. Because remember, we have saliva that works really well to try and buffer things away, but it can only do so much if we are not being very diligent with what uh, and how we take care of our teeth. But remember, don't be sad completely, because I know some of these things can be a lot of fun to have, but there are some things that we want to talk about, about if, if we do have this once in a while, what we should do to protect our teeth afterwards. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so we talked a lot about the different foods and drinks that we may have. And we did say, you know, sometimes there's some sad foods that we will eat every so often, uh, but we have to find a way to take care of them, right? Well, a big part of that is about taking care of our teeth, and that means that we're gonna be talking about doing brushing and flossing. So I have my friend Leo here, he's gonna kind of help me show you guys how I'd recommend that we wanna brush and floss. The, now, the first question I ask you is, how many times a day should we at least brush our teeth? Do you guys know? Is it one, is it five, two, three? 
Well, we say at least two times a day. We like you to brush before you go to any sort of school in the morning, and we like you to brush as the last thing you do before you go to bed. Do you guys know how long you should be brushing for? And if you said two minutes, you're right. It normally takes about a good two minutes to get around all parts of the mouse all over the places, okay? And how many times should you floss a day? So you at least once a day. Sometimes you have to floss more. Remember, what do we use floss for? It's that string that we go in between our teeth to get food that can, be, can get stuck in there. So at least do it one time a day. I like it at nighttime. But if you feel like you're getting something stuck earlier in the day, it's okay to do it a second time or more if you need to. Now, when we use our, our toothbrush, we should always try and use a toothbrush that's the right size for us. So your toothbrush might look different than your mom or dad's toothbrush. On your toothbrush, if you have a younger sibling or an older uh, brother or sister, it might look a little bit different too, because it has to be a brush that fits your mouth. So with that Leo's toothbrush over here, this is made for a lion. So don't try putting this tooth in, toothbrush in your mouth, okay? But now the other question I have is, when we used to use our toothbrush, don't we put something on top of it? You guys know what that's called? It's called toothpaste. So we like toothpaste that has a, a special vitamin called fluoride in it, but you don't have to use a whole lot of it. So really, I have two pictures I wanted to show you just to kind of give you a reference. If you're really still a pretty young kiddo and you're under three years of age, we think that really you want to do about maybe a size of a grain of rice of toothpaste onto your toothbrush, okay? Maybe two grains at most. And that's something that you can take in there and if mom does help you, they can push it in there so you don't have to eat too much of it, okay? As you get a little bit older, uh, and up to around six, seven years old, you can take the, basically the size of like a pea of toothpaste. And sometimes when you're a little bit older than that, if you need more, you can add a little bit, but this generally is m m enough for most, even your adult patients too. Now, as we get older than we grown ups. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, for this sake, we're gonna just imagine that we have toothpaste on here. I wanna lay back Leo and we're gonna show you how we would brush his teeth. So he's really opening nice and wide for me, which is really cool. But there's important parts. If we look at our teeth in all dimensions, there's different areas. We have the front of our teeth, we have the parts at the top of our teeth that we chew with, and don't forget there's the inside of our teeth too. So it's important to spend special attention to all of them. And do you guys know what the pink part is called around the teeth? Those are called the gums. So those have to also get special care when we're brushing. So if we're gonna focus on starting with the brushing with the front teeth and on the top ones, I always take my toothbrush, I hold it a little bit at an angle. So I don't come straight on like this. I will curve it just a little bit like this. So that way I'm basically able to get the, the long end of my, my uh, toothbrush bristles and they can go in nice sweeping circular motions. If you can see there, the bristles are actually going in that sort of circular motion are massaging and massaging all the way along the gums and the teeth. So that way I don't get any sort of leftover stuff stuck in there. And I get really, do a really thorough job trying to get all the way back there, all the way along these teeth, okay? And sometimes I change my position so I can make sure I get the right grasp on that. And remember, I'm spending about a whole two minutes on the whole mouth. So normally I'm spending about a minute on top and then a minute on the bottom, okay? And then of course, I'm gonna make sure I'm coming with the same angle, I flip it around, and I come from the inside. I'm also coming at an angle so I can do the inside of all the teeth. Nice, slow, circular motions, nice small circles, nice circles, and I'm able to brush away any food that gets stuck in there on those teeth. Same thing over here. Okay, and just also massages the gums while I'm at it. And then when I'm finished with the front and the back, I come and do all the tops of the teeth. The top is where we have all those little grooves that help us to break down and chew all of our food really well. And sometimes food gets stuck in there. So I'm still doing nice circular motions, but this way I'm brushing away, brushing away, brushing away, brushing away. And then I'll do the same thing when I come down to the bottom. I may change my position in my toothbrush, but I'm always coming with the same angle. Nice slow circular motions, nice small circles all around. Sweep, 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 sweep. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And I'm still holding my brush as I make the turn, as I turn the corner of the mouse. Cause sometimes we don't want to do this, then lift up, come back, and then we miss the whole tooth over there. So I'm always trying to make a continuous motion. And if I am changing my position, I still come back. I come back to the tooth that I missed. And I get all the way back to, her, to the back of our teeth. 
Mr. Leo has 32 teeth because he's a grown up already and with his, for his lying teeth. So he has to be really extra careful and brushing all the way back there. I'm going to do the insides again, the insides, insides, and all around. Top, 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 top. And then at the very end, I don't like to brush the tongue. Nice sweep, 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 sweep. And then we always spit out our toothpaste and then we are good to go. Now, the other thing we talked about is I'm brushing all around the teeth, but there's one part of the tooth that we talked about, we haven't talked about yet. We talked about the top, we talked about the front and the back, but we didn't talk about the in-between. So that's where our friends like dental floss comes into place. Dental floss comes in a lot of different ways. The one that we have, the ones that are like the string, and we have ones that can be little handles, little floss picks. They both work pretty well as long as you're using them correctly. So I'm going to show you how I would do it with the floss on the regular string. If you basically, you can grab any two of your fingers, however you prefer, you just do a little single wrap. And then I can use this to create a, use my thumbs to help guide how I'm going to position it uh, or any of my finger. I always go in between the teeth and then you hear a little snap. So I means I'm getting between the teeth and I'm going all the way down just so I touch the gum. Then I'm going to give a little C shape fold. So I'm going to give it like a hug. I'm going to go back and forth and come back up. And then I come back in, I gotta do the other side too. Back and forth, up, up. And I hear the snap every time. That's okay. Now, sometimes if our gums and our in between teeth are dense in a while, it might get a little bit icky looking. It might see something that looks weird, but it's okay. If you do it more and more, you'll see less and less of that. And that means your gums will be happier and your teeth will be happier as we go around, okay? And again, I'm gonna do my best to hug all around these chairs and I'm lifting up any sort of food here. It looks like Mr. Leo's doing pretty good. I don't see anything that looks like he's getting stuck there. Okay. Now, if you think using the two fingers is too difficult and sometimes, are you having someone help you out? Sometimes using a little flosser can be a little easier too. So with this, basically what we'll do is you can you find a good gripping point. You're gonna come in between the tooth. You can do the same effect. And I'm still using it to bend. I'm coming past it, going all the way down, up, Coming to the other side now, I'm flipping my up. Same thing over here and over there. And I'll start up on top, for example. He's got bigger teeth over here, but that's okay. We can still get in there. And these are, this is actually a small child's flosser, but it will work. So you can get bigger adult size ones too when you get to be older too. And you can go in between all the time. And you want to do this at least once a day and make sure you get all the way back to all of your teeth in there. Okay, it may take a little bit longer than you think, but if you get to get used to it, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute. And we like you doing this at nighttime. You can do this before you brush. Uh, if you want to get this in between stuff stuck out there, and then you can get a brush to get that nice minty feel at the very end. All right, so those are some awesome things that we like to do to take care of our teeth. Um, and it will help to make sure that no sad foods can get in there to cause any sort of sugar bugs.